Hey everybody, my name is Peter and I'll be showing you how to use Firebase for Python using the requests library uh, and more specifically how to use Firebase in your Kivi app. So uh, you're going to need a Firebase account. Uh, you can get to Firebase through firebase.google.com uh, and when you do that go to the console. You can click, click up here or you can go to console.firebase.google.com and down here you'll see all the projects that you're working on. Um, these are all my apps, but we're gonna create a new project. Uh, so go ahead and name it basically whatever you want. Let's go name it sample Firebase uh, app. Um, let's go ahead and accept that. This will take some time, uh, so I'm gonna pause it. That took about maybe like five or 10 seconds. So go ahead and click continue and we're going to need to use the database. So go ahead and click that over here. Um, we're gonna let that load a little bit. And we're gonna click Create. Uh, let's go ahead and do it in test mode and click Enable. This is gonna take some time, I'm gonna pause it. And this is the screen that you should see uh, after that's done. Uh, so we need to use the real-time database. Um, so go ahead up here and click real time database. And so everything that we write uh, to the database will show up here. But right now, we're going to move this over a bit. And this is going to be our starting Kivi code. So go ahead and copy this and you can follow along. I'm gonna give you guys some time to do that. Okay, so let's delve into our code. Uh, you can see that I'm using a load string function uh, rather than splitting it up into main.kv and main.py. This is just to get a more holistic view of it. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is give this an ID because we're going to need to get the text from it. So let's just call it JSON. And then the first one we're going to work on is the patch function uh, on release and then we're gonna make it call a function. Uh, let's just call it patch. Um, let's make it simple. And then we're gonna have it pass JSON, which is this guy over here, uh, except we're just gonna need the text. So we're gonna put dot text. And we're also going to have to specify location uh, for this patch function, and it's gonna be down here. So it's gonna be in the app. So what we have to do is this. So next, uh, what we're gonna do is get the URL. Let's go ahead and copy this. Paste it down here. Oops. Paste it down here. And what we're gonna do is dot JSON. And now it'll be the way it's supposed to. So now let's go ahead and make this uh, function patch. Oh yeah, and it's going to pass that JSON. So we'll just write that. We're, for this, we're going to import JSON. We're going to be working a lot with JSON. Uh, JSON is the language that the Firebase is uh, using. And of course, the requests library. So after that, uh, we're going to make a variable. Uh, we're just going to call it to database. This is what we're going to use to actually um, call the database. So what we're gonna have to do is dot JSON. We're gonna load. And this just takes uh, strings and converts them to JSON, uh, the, the JSON language. So it's gonna pass from here to here and then convert it. So the next thing we have to do is uh, requests and then it's going to be right there, patch. And then we're going to just do the URL. We'll just do self.url. And uh, for those of you that are new to this, uh, self just means it's referencing this up here. Uh, you'll see that once we do JSON, we don't need self to reference this database. So to database. So you can see we don't need the self because it's all underneath the same method. Okay, so now we're going to run this code and see what happens. I already created a 
JSON string. We're just going to copy and paste it onto here. And we're going to hit patch. Uh, we're going to see if it updated. And it didn't. Um, notice that it's not throwing any errors. This is because there are no permissions set. So we have to change these false into true. And these do not follow the conventions of Python where they're capitalized because this is JSON. So go ahead, save that, come back over here, and click patch. Okay, so we are at the five minute mark, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Um, now that we know how the code works, I am just going to really copy and paste uh, a lot of things. Um, so we're gonna change this to post. We're gonna change this to put. And this to delete. And then we're gonna go do the same thing here. Oops. Okay, and we're gonna spread this out a little bit. Um, we're basically gonna do the same exact thing except change these to, uh, what is this one, post. And then we're gonna go down here, change this to post as well. And then put, where is it, right there. That way we can just uh, do this really quickly. Okay, uh, we don't need this one. Okay, so now we have all of these um, functions set up. Uh, let's go ahead and run the code. Okay, let's go ahead and get this again. So again, patch, it really just uh, patches things up. So for example, you can see that it quote unquote patched it up. Um, what patch does is it can either uh, patch something, uh, replace it, or it can create something new if there's a uh, different name of it. So for example, here, it created parent one. I can create another one, parent two, okay? So that's what the patch does. Post uh, is a little bit irritating. I don't like it as much because it just creates random uh, stuff right here. So you can kind of see post post. Um, that's not really cool. Put is the same way, uh, or not the same way, it deletes everything and then it puts whatever is in here. Uh, so for example, we can just delete that and put, meaning it deletes everything and puts in whatever's in here. Uh, so I find myself using put and post not at all um, and I just mostly used patch uh, and delete. Uh, now delete is a little bit uh, tricky. So you can see that it, it deleted everything. Um, let's go ahead and, and do this. And let's just say I just want to delete this one. Uh, what it does is it just does that, which is not really that efficient. So I'm going to show you like a different way to go about deleting something off of uh, the Firebase. So let's go ahead and close this. Um, there will be some things that we need to do. Uh, we're going to change the the URL a little bit. We're, we don't need this JSON over here. So what we're going to do is... So basically everything except for the last five characters, which is one, two, three, four, five. So we're just gonna take this, and then what we're actually gonna do is add this. And then right there. And now we're gonna have to put this guy right there. So I can show you how this is supposed to work. Um, let's copy this again, paste it, post, post. Um, let's make another one like this, parent one. Uh, let's go parent two. Okay, so um, with, with this delete line, Whoops. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yes, we don't need this right here. We can just go over here. And JSON, that's what we're have to do. Uh, let's run this again. Okay, so to, to get this to delete, what we're going to have to do is actually go into the URL, um, which is like this. So it's Firebase parent and child one. So we're going to need this over here. And let's go back. And you'll see that this gets deleted because it's going to the parent and then it's going to the child one. Let's just say we wanted to go delete parent two and child number two. We would click delete and it would delete this. So we're a little bit of the 10 minute mark and I'm gonna speed this up again. Um, so up here and down here, we learned how to get our, uh, from our code into our database. So now we want to get our database into our code and this is how we're gonna do it. So we're going to go trigger a method that we haven't built yet. Uh, let's just call it get. We don't need to pass any variables through it. So get, okay. And we're just gonna name the variable request and we're going to use the request library and we're gonna do get. And now we're gonna do the URL again. Uh, with this, it's going to be a little bit different because we need an authentication key. Uh, going to be uh, question mark off equals, and then we're going to concatenate our uh, authentication key, which we haven't created yet. So let's just do auth key, and we're going to create this up here. Okay, and how we get our authentication key is in our Firebase. We're going to click this cog up here. We're going to go to project settings. We're going to go to service accounts. And then we're going to go to database secrets. So up here, uh, it just says that it's deprecated. I was using this just fine. Um, however, it should still be able to work. Uh, it's saying the Firebase admin SDK, which is up here, and, and you can, in if in future they do decide to fully deprecate it and uh, get rid of it. Um, but for now, we're going to show this. We're going to copy it and into our code right here. So after that, we're going to print and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, you can see this response 200, which means that there is a connection. Uh, however, that's not going to do us any good. What we need to do is add dot JSON to it to convert it into a JSON string. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that again. And here we go. Whatever is down here is also in our Firebase. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code and I'm going to compile it into an APK and see if it works on my smartphone. So I was able to successfully compile it and put it on my phone. Uh, you can see it going. It patched that up. Uh, we're going to post, post, keep posting. Um, and then everything's going to get deleted once I hit put, except for that one line. So. If you guys like this video, uh, leave a like. There's no need to subscribe because I barely put out videos. Um, you can check out my apps that I have on the Google Store. Uh, I'm going to leave a link down below, and everything that you need should be down below in the description. Thank you.